This is the Fitbit Charge 6 and apparently it is Fitbit's number one fitness tracker to date. But is it actually any good? Mm. We at Running Shoe Guru put the Fitbit Charge 6 through its paces, collated all the pros and cons and saw how it measured up to its competitors such as Polo and Karas and here's what we found. Little disclaimer here, Fitbit did not gift us the Charge 6 nor are they aware that we're making this review and to be honest I don't think they're going to want to know that we're making this review because it was a bit of a car crash. Yikes. Don't get me wrong, the watch looks great. The coral and champagne gold option looks really good. But as for the rest of the techie bit, the Charge 6 very much imitates its predecessor, the Charge 5. A one inch AMOLED display, it's touch screen, which is okay I guess, but in some of the cold weather it's been really hard to actually use the watch, which is quite strange. The upgrade brings a back like touch screen button on the left side of the watch and AI technology, which learns as to use it more and makes fitness metrics even more specific, apparently. Apparently. I found the same old struggle that the Charge 6, like other watches, they, they really struggle to read heart rate through tattoos. However, with the design of this and how sleek and small it is, it was really easy to just, just turn the watch around. It didn't look weird like other watches have, it just looked like a bracelet. So. That's quite good. I fully appreciate that Fitbit advertises fitness trackers, not fitness watches. However, is there really a difference? No, not really. Google will say that fitness trackers are a little less fancy with some of the metrics that they track as such. But when it comes down to it, they all track health metrics in one way or another and prioritise different data. You know, the Coros really doesn't want to know about your health, but Garmin emphasises your body battery and your stress. So, and with that, the first pro is that the Fitbit Charge 6 does measure a vast amount of health metrics. Within the app, it looks at sleep, readiness score, steps, exercise, hours of activity, distance moved throughout the day, calories burned, breathing rate, heart rate variability, skin temperature. I still don't know why we need this, can someone please in line to me? Oxygen saturation, only when you're asleep. Resting heart rate, you can also measure your weight, glucose levels, stress, period tracking, water and food intake. That's a lot to reel off. This package beats the Coros Pace 3 because Coros do not care about your health metrics or living a healthy lifestyle at all. So one up for the Fitbit. However, the first and most important con of the Fitbit Charge 6 is not entirely accurate. <laughs> I took my trusty Polar Vantage V2 and the Charge 6 on a number of runs throughout the test period to see how they compare and boy, I'm going to be making this face a lot, you might as well get used to it. My V2 said it was a 8.47 mile run, whereas my Fitbit clocked 9 mile run. Post run on the app, the map that I got of my run was quite interesting. Both watches have internal GPS and GLONASS system. I don't know if I've said that right. But the maps were wildly different. According to the Fitbit, I teleported a couple times. And you know, that's weird. Maybe I just run that fast. The average pace per mile on the V2 was 11 minutes 49, whereas the Fitbit clocked at a 10.59 minute per mile. So there's quite a bit of a disparity there. Average heart rate was 166 beats per minute with the Polar H10 heart rate monitor. So against gold standard, whereas the Fitbit registered a 171 beats per minute. It's not too bad, but it's enough to be in the wrong zone. And as we talk about zones, here comes another con. Fitbit have their own heart rate zones. Why? If you're an avid runner who's looking at threshold training, who's really particular about um, interval training and, and hyper-focused on heart rate training, stay well clear from Fitbit Charge 6. Also, it drives you insane the amount of bleeping this thing does. Like, I'm, I'm not even joking. It's, it's ridiculous. Anyone else in the health and fitness world use five zones, Fitbit are choosing to use three zones. Three zones, why are you using three zones? Fat burning zone, zone one, two is cardio zone, and zone three is peak zone. All worked on a percentage of your heart rate max, which is what five zones do. So what they're essentially doing is merging zone two and three together, and four and five together. I guess it makes it more beginner friendly, but it does make the use of third party training apps or training plans really difficult because, I mean, Fitbit don't offer running plans for, for 
number one. So if you wanted to do a couch to 5K, you would have to get a third party app to do that. But if the third party app said interval training in zones two and three, you're not gonna know what that is on a Fitbit and it won't be able to take you through it anyway. It kind of cuts you off from more specific training. Does that make sense? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Don't reinvent the wheel. Just why? <laughs> What's more annoying is the Charge 6 will buzz when you enter a heart rate zone and it buzz when you leave a heart rate zone. There's only heart three zones, they've got to be... It must take you a while to get from zone one to zone two. No, no it doesn't. It buzzes once for the first zone, twice for the second zone, three for the third zone. Makes perfect sense. However, it buzzes each time you exit and enter a zone. So if you're going from zone one, it beeps, you're in zone one. If you're about to leave that, it beeps once for zone one, or vibrates even, and then vibrates twice for zone two, so you are effectively having like three buzzes on your wrist. And at one point you're gonna have like five buzzes on your wrist. Like it's it's just ridiculous. Just stop buzzing and let me get on with it. Just let me run. It's so it's just really distracting and it just sucks. What I will say that on the Fitbit, the, the training screen is kept very, very simple. You have your heart rate, which zone you're in, your average pace and the distance you've covered. All the info post run is found in the app. Things like distance, mass splits, um, steps, calories are all offered, but how much you get without the Fitbit Premium subscription is a little worrying. The third con is you have to keep paying to use all the features on the watch, which kind of is ridiculous. It's wonderful that the watch is only $159, it's in a really good price range, however there's added costs that come with it to get the full benefits of the watch. It comes with a couple months of Fitbit Premium just for free so you can trial it and really to get you used to the data and make you not want to lose it. After that, after the free period, it's $9.99 per month. But wait, actually there's more to this too. To control YouTube music from your watch, which is very easily done apparently, you need to subscribe to that too. That's another $14 a month. Now, you might think that's not a big deal, you know, 24 or $25 a month. But let me tell you, Google own both YouTube and Fitbit. So it's no surprise they want to push you from one platform, the Fitbit, to YouTube Music. But they're asking for subscriptions for both and you cannot use the music feature without that subscription, which you don't get a free trial in, by the way. Maybe it's the stubborn Englishness in me, but I proper got the hump with that. Just keep in mind that the majority of the watch kind of comes obsolete if you don't keep paying for your subscriptions. Let's stick with the exercise tracker tag that Fitbit put on this. However, the Charge 6 does not have an altimeter. I did see the badge for 10 plus floors and whatever in the app, so I double checked it and I tested it against the competitor, the Chorus Pace 3 for example. Online forums said that steps weren't counted at all if you walked up the stairs but I found that not to be true. I walked 15 floors. The Chorus Pace 3 said I'd walked 17, not too bad. However, Fitbit did not have a clue. It didn't know that I'd walked any. So I took a couple of steps up the stairs and my Fitbit and my Fitbit step counter went from 709 to 718 in three steps. Interesting. Clearly, the navigation gods hate me because I could not for the life of me get a Google Maps connection with the Charge 6, not once. Whether I was sat at home, whether I was in the middle of the roads, I don't live in a built up area, or I was out on the trails, I could not get it to connect to Google Maps, not once. I've seen online that other people have struggled with this worldwide, so it must be a common problem. And they were said that the straps need to be ridiculously loose in order to get the GPS connection. However, you're then not able to get heart rate readings. So I'm in a lose-lose situation and it just kind of sucks. Trying to get the connection of Google Maps was so frustrating. It just, it's just so frustrating. Let's end this one on a high because there is a feature on here that I did actually love and it's the smart alarm. I've not seen it on any other watch before, which is kind of mad now I think about how much of a benefit I got. So. If I've set an alarm for 7 a.m., you have an option to click a smart alarm, and what that does is the Fitbit measures your sleep, as it's doing anyway, but in between 6.30 and 7 a.m., it measures when's a good time to wake you up, like concerning your sleep cycles. 
when is when are you sleeping lightest and is it most effective to wake you up at that point so let's say at 6 45 a.m it wakes me up for someone who ain't a morning person and i hate alarms it was a nice gentle wake up i felt refreshed i felt energized i actually felt more of a morning person when i had the smart alarm on so absolute big thumbs up there and i think they're actually one step ahead of all the watches with that feature all in all in my honest opinion, I would not recommend this watch to anyone. Not a soul. Oops. The price might be right and the ongoing costs aren't atrocious, but it doesn't do its job. It doesn't track very well, in my opinion. If you're a data nerd or an avid runner, then stick to the, the Garmin's, the Polar's, the Coros brand because it's going to be more beneficial for you. If you're new to the health and fitness game and you just want to sort of dip your toe in and see how your body's responding to stress or sleep or whatever it is you're looking for, then okay, but I think you can get better for your money even though this is quite cheap. So tell me what you think about the video in the comments below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more running shoe and tech reviews. See you soon.